Oxy MBBS, one step solution for all medical studies. Hi friends, in this video we will talk about the basic anatomical terms. As these terms are most oftenly used during MBBS course, that is why these terms should be clear before going deep into the MBBS syllabus. So friends, are you all ready to have crystal clear concepts for these terms? Yes, so let's start. Friends, this lady says, I have pain in the body. In the body means this pain can be here, 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 here or anywhere in the body. It means we are not able to find out where the pain is actually present in the body. Now friends, this lady says I have pain in the abdominal region. In the abdominal region means this pain can be here, here, here or anywhere in the abdominal region. It means friends, still we are not sure where the pain is actually present in the abdominal region. But friends, if this lady says I have pain in the abdominal region and it is 2 cm superior to the umbilicus or navel. Friends, this is our umbilicus or navel and if she is telling that 2 cm superior or above the umbilicus, it means we have to go in this direction. And it is 2 cm superior, it means she is telling about this point. So friends, this is the exact location of the pain which is present in the abdominal region. Similarly friends, if she says I have pain in the abdominal region and it is 2 cm inferior or below the umbilicus or navel. It means friends, from the navel or umbilicus we have to go in this direction and if she is telling about the 2 cm inferior to the umbilicus then it is that point where she is getting pain. Now friends, if she says I have pain in the abdominal region and it is 2 cm right to the umbilicus. Now friends, this is the left side of the subject and this is the right side of the subject. And friends, remember one thing that these terms right and the left are used according to the subject, not according to the observer. As in this case, you are the observer. As according to you, this will be the right side of the subject and this will be the left side of the subject. But friends, we will not use these right and left according to the observer. We will use right and left according to the subject. So friends, this is the left side of the subject and this is the right side of the subject. And she is telling 2 cm right to the umbilicus. It means we have to go in this direction. And it is 2 cm. It means this is the exact location of the pain. And similarly friends, this point will be 2 cm left to the umbilicus. And friends, if she says, I have pain in the right forearm. Now friends, as you know, this is the right side of the subject and this is the left side of the subject. And if she is telling right forearm, it means she is talking about this side. And friends, the part of the body which is present between the elbow and the wrist is called forearm. It means friends, the pain can be here, here or anywhere in the forearm. But if she says pain in the right forearm and it is 2 cm distal from the elbow. Now friends, the meaning of distal is something is present away from the body. So friends, this is elbow and she is telling 2 cm distal from the elbow. It means friends, we have to go in this direction that is away from the body and friends this point is present 2 cm away from the elbow. So this is the exact location where she is getting pain and if she says 2 cm proximal to the wrist friends the meaning of proximal is something is present towards the body. So friends this is our wrist and she is telling 2 cm proximal or towards the body. It means we have to go in this direction. So friends, this is the exact location where she is getting pain. 
Now friends, I am sure you have understood these basic anatomical terms. As with the help of these terms, we are able to precisely locate the feature or structure of the body. Friends, under basic anatomical terms, first we will discuss what is standard anatomical position because on the basis of this position, the planes, the directional terms, the regional terms and many more terms are defined. So friends, when we will say our body is in standard anatomical position, when first it is erect and in the rest state and facing forward, arms are rotated outward, because of this the palms are facing forward and thumbs are pointed away from the body and the arms are moved slightly away from the body and because of this the hands do not touches the body and feet are slightly apart from each other and they are parallel to each other and the toes are facing forward. So friends, these are the characteristic features of the standard anatomical position. Friends, first we will discuss the planes and under planes, first we will discuss the median or sagittal plane. So friends, this body is in anatomical position and if a plane which is passing through the midline of this body like this, then friends, this plane is called median plane. Friends, this is our skull which is seen from the top. It is frontal suture and it is sagittal suture. And as this plane is passing through this sagittal suture like this, that is why this plane is also called sagittal plane. And friends, the planes which passes parallel to this sagittal plane that are called parasagittal plane. So friends, this median plane or sagittal plane divides the body into right part and left part and friends the parts of the body which are present towards this plane are called medial and the parts of the body which are present away from this median or sagittal plane are called lateral. So friends on the basis of this plane we have two anatomical terms medial and lateral. For example friends the thumb is lateral to the little finger or it can be said that little finger is medial to the thumb. And friends, the bone in the forearm which is present towards the thumb is called radius and the bone which is present towards the little finger is called ulna bone. That is why friends, the radius bone is lateral to ulna bone or it can be said that Ulna bone is medial to radius bone. Similarly friends, in the leg, fibula bone is present towards the little toe and tibia bone is present towards the big toe. And as big toe is medial to little toe, that is why tibia bone is medial to fibula bone or fibula bone is lateral to tibia bone. Now friends, how will you remember that ulna bone is present towards the little finger and fibula bone is present towards the little toe? It is very simple friends. The L in the ulna and fibula will remind you that ulna bone is present towards the little finger and fibula bone is present towards the little toe. Now friends, coming to our next plane that is coronal or frontal plane. So friends, what is it? This is an imaginary vertical line which passes through the body in such a way that it divides the body into anterior and posterior parts. And friends, as this plane is passing through the coronal or frontal suture, that is why this plane is called coronal or frontal plane which divides the body into anterior part and posterior parts. Anterior part is also called ventral and posterior part is also called dorsal. So friends, on the basis of this plane, we have two anatomical terms, ventral and dorsal. Ventral is also called anterior and dorsal is also called posterior. For example, friends, the eyes are anterior or ventral to ears or it can be said that ears are dorsal to or posterior to nose and eyes. 
Now friends, coming to our last plane that is transverse or horizontal plane as it is an imaginary plane which divides the body into superior part and inferior part. And friends, radiologists refer this plane as axial plane. Now friends, we will discuss the directional terms and under it, first we will discuss the right and left. So friends, as we have discussed earlier that this is the left side of the subject and this is the right side of the subject. So friends, the parts of the body which will be present towards the left side will be called as left and the parts of the body which will be present towards the right side will be called as right. And friends, remember one thing that these terms right and left are used according to the subject but not according to the observer. For example friends, this point is present right to umbilicus and this point is present left to umbilicus according to the subject but not according to the observer. Now friends, next directional terms we have superior and inferior. Superior is also called cephalic because it is present towards the head and inferior is also called caudal because it is present towards the feet. So friends, the parts of the body which are present towards the head are called superior and the parts of the body which are present towards the feet are called inferior. For example friends, eyes are superior to mouth. And friends, neck is inferior to mouth. Next directional terms we have proximal and distal. Now friends, remember one thing that these terms proximal and distal are used only for the limbs. So friends, these are upper limbs and these are lower limbs. And friends, these terms proximal and distal are defined on the basis of center of gravity. So friends, the parts of the limbs which are present towards this center of gravity are called proximal and the parts of the limbs which are present away from the center of gravity are called distal. Now friends, one very important point about these proximal and distal terms is that these terms are used only when describing two points on the same limb. For example friends, elbow is proximal to the wrist or wrist is distal to the elbow. Similarly friends, knee is proximal to the ankle or ankle is distal to the knee. As friends, these two points are present on the upper limb of the left side and lower limb of the left side. That is why it is okay. Now friends, if we say elbow is proximal to the knee, it means friends we are talking two different points on two different limbs. That is why friends it is not okay. Now friends we have terms superficial and deep. Superficial is also called parietal and deep is also called visceral. So friends the parts of the body which are present towards the body surface are called superficial and the parts of the body which are present inside of the body surface are called deep. For example friends, skin is present superficial to bone and brain is deep to skull. Now friends, we have one very important regional term that is axial and appendicular. And friends, the region appendicular includes the upper limb and the lower limb. Upper limb includes the clavicle, scapula, humerus, radius and ulna, carpels, metacarpals and phalanges. And friends, the lower limb includes the hip or pelvic bone, femur, patella, tibia and fibula, tarsals, metatarsals and phalanges while remaining parts of the body are axial region which includes the head, neck, the thorax, the vertebral column, sacrum and coccyx.